Be Happy Few, a story where we dive into a world of drugs, poverty and delusions, a world where hope is in rare supply at the end of a terrifying war against Germany and suffering the loss greater than people realise. In our previous video, we left Arthur who was in a downward spiral of doubt and anger after Sally agreed to help him if he required a bottle of Cod Liver Oil. She mentions there will be some at Hayworth Labs. Like everything in this game, getting access to Hayworth Labs will need more than Arthur's winning confidence. He needs a press badge. Fortunately, Arthur remembers about his old job as a reporter with the Hamlin Occurrent and decides to go and see Bribby's employer to inquire about joining them again. Margaret Oliphant is the editor-in-chief we have to talk to about getting a job. Although she is happy to see us, she mentions she has enough reporters yet not happy with their work as six pieces have been handed in and they are all about the same thing. The new flavour of joy. It's coconut if you can believe it. Margaret does mention about another reporter, Gemma, who was meant to be looking into the poor state of the tunnels about to run under Wellington Wells. Sadly, she has not been seen in some time. This gives Arthur the idea to check out what Gemma has. On the reporter's desk, there is a note from Margaret suggesting it would be fun for Gemma to do a piece on the art made by the tunnel maintenance workers, Wisp Whimsically, known as the Tunnel Rats. Leaving a side note about Margaret overheard a chap in a boiler suit talk about the motoline leaks down there. I'm sure it's just whining, right? It is clear that though the memo is asking Gemma to do an art piece, Margaret actually wants her to look at the leaks. Another memo, again from Margaret, is asking what is going on as Gemma has been gone for more than a week. Margaret is worried Gemma has gone in too deep and is wanting to know if her reporter is okay. Apart from the two memos, there is nothing much to go on. The next course of action is to go to a house and see if there's any information we can go on. Arthur notices an alarm is going off from Gemma's house. As he takes a side path to get to the back of the house, he is mowed down by a stranger who quickly retorts, Just here to read the meter! When we enter, we see another stranger shouting for the alarm to be turned off. Arthur tries to sneak past him to turn the alarm off upstairs. Unfortunately, the stranger turns around and sees him. He asks who Arthur is. When Arthur claims to live in the house, the intruder grins, says, Love what you've done with the place, and makes a break for it. Regrettably for the stranger, the home defence system is still running and he's electrocuted and left unconscious. Arthur must be quicker before he's next. After turning the alarm off, we hear shouting from outside. The voice is a woman. Arthur peeks out the window to see Gemma being apprehended by two joy doctors. They seem to be accusing her of being sick and she has stopped taking her joy. Gemma refutes this claim. Nonetheless, the joy doctors take her away. While exploring the house, Arthur comes across two more joy doctors. They are discussing what they can take from the house. Did Gemma find something while reporting on the tunnel art show? One asks if they should take everything. The other replies how Dr V will not like that as the constabulary might notice. Is there a conflict between the constabulary and Dr V? Is there a power struggle? This could be the question if the joy doctors are keeping secrets from them. Arthur sneaks past them to the doorway of Gemma's home office. He stands at the doorway and makes a rhetorical notion of I thought vampires had to be invited in. Realising he is a downer, the joy doctors make a rush to grab him. Unknown to them, just inside there is a big red button. Arthur slams it to release the shutters, preventing them from gaining access. Bear in mind, this will only hold them back for so long. The protagonist needs to hurry in finding what Gemma was doing and get out. Gemma has started to notice things and we find she is off her joy. Like Sally, she is taking sunshine a drug that gives the outward appearance of joy without the actual effects. In her diary, she writes about how her mind is clearer and in a morbid, horrible way, it is good to remember. She acknowledges she should take her joy but cannot keep doing so. Due to the dangers of Gemma's reporting, she has to write her notes in cipher and has informed Margaret of this. We find memos from Sally Boyle to Dr V talk about creating a new flavour of joy, strawberry. Reading through the memo, it suggests supplies to create the joy they have is running low and are desperate to find a solution. Sally has recommended going to the witches for help, as it would buy the time they need to give the general the permanent solution Dr V has promised. 
On the wall are numerous notes and articles with red, with red twine going along as if to say there is a connection between all of them. Headlines such as Plague rumours are a silly prank. Alleged toxic fog just a bad smell from the bakery. Possible toxic waste dumped into the water carried by fog. Gemma has made a connection with the outbreaks and how they are correlated with wind direction and believes it is coming from the Joy Factory. Has she stumbled upon an unsafe practice? Have you seen Harry? Who is Harry? Hayworth undoubtedly on holiday. Again, who is Hayworth? Sunshine is no joy. Gemma has taken an interest with a few memos written by Sally Boyle and believes Dr V himself is on Sunshine. She questions how they can carry on with drugging people while having a clear conscience. She also notes that unlike Joy, Sunshine does not contain a contraception. What happens if someone has a baby? This question is worth looking into as on our travels through the city, have we ever seen a child? It seems procreation has been outlawed. Worthwhile new study at Hayworth Labs. Mass lobotomy? S, I'm assuming which stands for Sally, does not know what the permanent solution is. From what Arthur gathers, Gemma had planned to pose as a patient to get into Dr. Verloc's lab in order to cover what is going on. As we've seen from the memo, supplies to make joy are running low and a more permanent solution is greatly needed, especially with the pressure from the general. It is now time to leave. Thankfully, Arthur can access a vent which leaves outside. The next step is clear. Arthur needs to go to the Motoline Regulation Unit to find some answers. Arthur requires a boiler suit to pass as another worker, but even in disguise, the greeting we get is far from welcoming. Arthur tells them Central sent him to help out and the man in charge is far from happy. Even so, he does not stand in our way as they all believe we are there to help. Though from what we see next, Arthur clearly does not know what he is doing. He goes to a pipeline and turns the valve, resulting in a strange noise. Within seconds there is an explosion and the three worker men are knocked out unconscious. Here is Arthur's opportunity to, to grab the keys to the hatch and gain entry to the tunnels. Arthur is in need of finding more evidence. Upon entry he finds dead bodies scattered around. What has happened here? A letter is found mentioning about a bad batch of joy making the workers half as happy but more foggy. Naturally they took twice as much joy to resolve this, leaving them too foggy to work. They then inquire about either having a regular strength joy being provided or having blackberry. The mention of the workers not being clear minded could explain the state the place is in. There are leaks, fires and apparently an electrical sculpture so no one can get past it to get access to the rest of the facility and one worker has already died trying to remove it. Arthur can see an example of how bad the worker's state of mind is when he passes a window which allows him to see a room below. Two workers enter, one seems to be clear headed while the other skips in a daydream. We can clearly see the floor is electrified, yet the daydreamer does not and carries on skipping till his foot touches the floor. He is dead. The second becomes angry, giving an offhand comment about how the apprentices never listen. Arthur finds more about the bad batch of joy, as a memo is found in an office about how Henrietta made muffins for the bake sale, but mistakenly used almond gas to flavour them and is now on holiday. Arthur thinks to himself, even on Joy, people aren't that stupid, unless there'd be something wrong with the Joy. As said before, the tunnels and work areas are in disarray, making it harder to gain access to areas such as offices. Arthur eventually gets to the main office where he can find the evidence Gemma was looking for. The first one is an electrical map layout of the Maitlene pipes for each section. When it is turned on, coloured lights show the status of each section. Shockingly, there are a lot of red lights than green, some are black, probably meaning they have failed entirely or the bulbs need changing. Second is a letter from the supervisor thanking Dr. Verloc's response on the issue of the bad batch of joy. Though they appreciate the offer to send those badly affected to be sent to the lab for experimental treatment, he notes his entire staff will be knocking on his gate. If the joy is going bad, what will the end result be? The entire population of Wellington Wells is dependent on Joy and Arthur has seen firsthand what happens when they go off it. 
third is Dr. Vallock's response to the letter, suggesting the workers take more joy as there is no harm in it while they work on the new formula. Arthur remarks a new formula sounds exciting, although he remains cynical. Exciting advertising often hides bad news in Wellington Wells. Now that Arthur has the evidence, it is time to leave. Dismally, this task is just as easy as entering and moving around. Tunnels are collapsing, fires are erupting, and the only way to escape is in a giant robotic tea kettle. Dangerous as it is, Arthur manages to escape and get back to Margaret with what he had found. Arthur informs her about Gemma being taken away when she discovered the underground tunnels were falling apart. He asks if that was why Margaret had sent her in the first place. Margaret at first tries to reject the notion as such a story could not be published, though Arthur presses her by saying if she gave him a press badge he could find out what is happening in the labs. After seeing what happened to Gemma, Margaret is hesitant at first, though eventually agrees, advising Arthur if she's not here when he gets back then get whatever he found published, mentioning how the numpties know how to put ink on the page but only read the articles they wrote. Arthur inquires what she means by not being here, asking if she is leaving. Margaret confesses she does want to but does not know how. The last thing she says to us is, but you never know when I might stop printing lies and they work like that. As Arthur leaves, we the viewers know we will not see Margaret Oliphant again. She knows too much, and those in power in Wellington Wells don't appreciate that at all. Now equipped with the press patch and a recorder, Arthur can go to Hayworth Labs under the guise he is there to interview Dr. Vallark. Before Arthur is allowed to enter, he is told there has been a slight accident in the labs, leading to a lockdown and to follow the brownish line. He is also strongly advised to keep to the path as there is delicate machinery and chemicals in use. Although we have been granted access through the main door, Arthur needs to take the factory route to get to Dr. Vallock's office. We have another stealth mission of sneaking and going through vents. Not following the path gives Arthur access to areas where we find more information confirming Gemma's suspicions. Number one, the factory is dumping chemicals in the river. However, they do not believe nor accept there are any deadly side effects. Number two, supplies to make joy is running low and something needs to be done. Number three, the new batch of joy is not having the same results as the previous formula in a way it is sending people crazy and thoughts that could only be described as delusional. Four, the permanent solution is a lobotomy. What is happening here? Dr. Vallog may hold the answers. Finally making it to the reception area of Dr. Vallog's office, Arthur is told the doctor is too busy to be disturbed. Thinking on his feet, Arthur bluffs, claiming the brom brominating reaction has caught fire and there are poisonous byproducts. Annoyed, Dr. Vallock tells the constable to tell Arthur to do what he did last time to solve the issue. Just as the constable relays the message, Dr. Vallock realises no one would know how to fix it. Knowing Arthur is an imposter, Security Protocol 187 has been activated. The door is sealed, the room fills with gas, and crazed constables attack us with fiery truncheon. Taking down does not take long, and Arthur can steal the keycard to Vallock's office to confront the good doctor himself. Arthur greets him with, Do you know half of your workers are unconscious? Dr Vallock is too engrossed in his work to notice Arthur should not be there, spouting ideas about new ideas for joy. Arthur tries to argue about how it will turn people into meat robots. Dr. Vallock does not seem to phase by this. After a few moments of arguing about the morality of it all, Vallock realises Arthur is the downer he had been warned about and asks what he wants. Arthur makes a request for cod liver oil. When Dr. Vallock asks, why do you think I will give it to you? Arthur pulls out a bottle of the new Joy formula and threatens to smash it, releasing the fumes and making Vallock like everyone else. Vallock screams him not to do it as the formula drives people insane. The doctor becomes afraid and puts his finger on a button that sets off a machine, electrocuting Arthur. Sadly, Vallock is at a stalemate as he needs to keep his finger on the button to keep Arthur incapacitated, while at the same time make his escape. Quickly, Vallock makes a run for it down a police tube. Arthur picks himself up, ready to search for the cod liver oil. 
He starts to look through the office and finds a switch leading to a secret area where we find the Cod Liver Oil. Also, while exploring the secret area, Arthur finds three rooms with windows. Inside two of them have downers in. It seems they have been experimenting with the new formula on them by releasing it as a gas controlled by a red button on the side of each window. However, when Arthur comes to the third room, the window is broken. Has the downer escaped? And if so, where are they? There is a way out from there where we find toxic liquids and dead bodies. Arthur is left wondering if they were pushed or flushed. This confirms the leftover waste is highly dangerous and mutative. Once Arthur leaves, he goes back to Margaret at the Hamlin Occurrent. The building is closed off with signs warning of a down breach. While the constable patrolling troll is at the end of the street, Arthur breaks in to find everything a mess. Papers are scattered all over as if they were looking for something. Margaret's office is in the same way. Arthur finds a note left in some sort of code which he cannot make out. In the office there are cat statues and paintings. This is a hint to unlock a secret door to a room. Margaret and Gemma were investigating more than underground tunnels. Notes piled up gives more information of the state of Wellington Wells. Everything is not okay. Food supply are running low. Foggy Jack is a real person and a real murderer. Joy quality is plunging and resulting in more people becoming downers against their will. Stocks are low and exhausted the materials taken from the Germans. Uncle Jack has disappeared. The episodes people have been watching are repeats. Questions have been asked about his whereabouts, though no answer has been given. We found a letter from Margaret to the readers. It is safe to assume this was meant to be printed in the next newspaper print. In the letter, she explains how for 15 years they have concealed and softened the truth of the real news happening in Welton Wells to avoid making people unhappy and not wanting to be responsible for anyone becoming a downer. It ends with saying, it is their civic responsibility to tell the truth, fully aware it may be the last issue if they tell the whole truth with the last line, truth is beauty, this is all ye need to know. The last act of Margaret Oliphant was to expose the truth. Unable to carry on with the lies, she put herself at risk to expose the truth the higher powers have tried to conceal. Sadly, this may not happen as she's been taken away and may never be seen again by anyone. Now holding on to what Margaret and Gemma have gathered, Arthur really needs to get out before he is next. He has the cod liver oil for Sally, so now she is our next stop. He enters Sally's home mumbling angrily about how Sally better have his letter of transit. Looking around for her, she gets, he gets angrier, stating if she isn't there, he will kill her. A soft voice is heard behind us, it's Sally. Arthur hands over the cod liver oil and asks about the letter of transit. Sally starts to speak about how they are the only two who are not stoned on joy and asks how he is. Arthur seems to go into another rage, starting to raise his voice. He asks, why do you care? Sally tries to ask about how he plans to get out. Our protagonist seems to be on edge and demands to know why she won't just hand over the letter of transit. He goes on about how everything is about what she wants and what she needs. It's here we learn what happened between them. Sally has slept with Arthur's father in the marital bed. Arthur realises his outburst was too much and tries to make up by saying, In the strangest way, you're completely innocent. You're practically the only one I know who is. Sally points to where the letter is. After picking it up, Arthur suggests she comes with him. Sally's excited by this, asking if he means it. He says yes and tries to grab her to go, saying they have to leave now. Sally pulls back saying it will have to be in the morning as there is something she needs to tell him. Arthur doesn't seem to want to hear it and puts her hesitance to self-preservation. He says no hard feelings, grabs the letter and leaves. While he walks away, Arthur questions himself thinking of going back and listening but he pushes the thoughts aside as he believes having Sally will leave him into more trouble. What was Sally going to tell Arthur? Why did he refuse to listen? Sadly, we have come to the end of our time, but join us next time where we go deeper into the story of Arthur Hastings and Wellington Wells.